Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I really want to thank whoever was in charge of keeping the weather good for tonight, so thank you very much for that. Tonight is a night of incredible celebration for a very special group of students. It has been such an honor and a privilege to get to know them this year and to have this year with them. Uh, they are truly a very special group of students. I think they deserve a lot of applause tonight. I think they deserve so much recognition and love that we can give to them. I really am looking forward, and I'll speak a little later about all their high school adventures. So without further ado, I would like you all to please stand. And as loud as you want to cheer, let's welcome the middle school class, eighth graders of 2020. Thank you. One more, more round, round of applause, applause for this wonderful, wonderful class. class. And please be seated momentarily, and I just want to take this opportunity to welcome all who are here with us this evening. My name is Joseph McCora. I'm the very proud principal of Bronxville Middle School, and I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time to be here with us this evening. Uh, we're going to take you through a little bit of an exercise of some of the things that we do every day here at Bronxville Middle School, and usually I'm the one leading this exercise, but tonight I have someone way better than me that will lead us in this exercise. Would you all give a rousing round of applause to my good friend, Sean Spillane, who will begin the ceremony this evening.
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us tonight. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner, which will be performed by our middle school orchestra. Let us take this time to quiet ourselves, and together with respect, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you to our orchestra. Please be seated. Each year, students share their thoughts about middle school as they move on to high school. And this year, we have three wonderful students who will share some of those thoughts with you. Our first speaker this evening, please welcome Charlotte Howell. Good evening, everyone. Wonderful teachers and staff, proud families, and my fellow classmates. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Charlotte Haller. For those of you who do, hi. Today marks not only the end of our middle school journey, but also the start of a new and exciting chapter, high school. This year has been unique and special for everyone, and I'm so thankful for everything that we got to experience. From Teen Center and the Snowflake Ball, to trips to Six Flags, Williamsburg, and Boston, I know that we are all so grateful to have had these opportunities. We're probably all scared or at least apprehensive about high school. I know I am, but I'm confident that the Bronxville class of 2027 will do great things in the future. I have a lot of faith in all of us. Just look at us. We've already accomplished so much. We've learned how to consistently do our homework, take exams, maybe even two in the same day, and manage our after-school activities. We've kept old friends and made new ones. We've laughed, possibly cried once or twice, volunteered our time, played sports, performed in musicals, and bonded with our teachers. And these examples are only a fraction of what we've learned to do this year. Speaking of our teachers, none of what we've accomplished as a class would have been possible without our amazing teachers and staff at Bronxville. They've encouraged us how to, to persist despite the odds and have helped us understand how to live out the Bronxville promise. Also, a special shout out to Antonio, Edwin, Max, and George for always greeting everyone with a smile. Thank you, teachers and staff, for making this year so enjoyable. And I know that we all cannot thank Mr. Mercora enough for everything that he's done for us. I have to admit that I was a little bit nervous about having a new principal, as I imagine many of us were. But Mr. Mercora was able to make the transition seamless and joyful. He's done so much for us, from leading the morning announcements every day to making our school trips possible. And of course, he taught us that. Only a fool gets in trouble on a Friday, and there are no fools in Bronxville Middle School. We're all going to miss that next year. Our dedicated families, especially our parents, we would like to thank you for guiding us every step of the way throughout our academic careers. We really appreciate everything that you've done for us, from getting us to school on time to helping us with late night homework assignments. Even though we may not always show it, we're so, so thankful for the daily support and love you give to us. And finally, to us graduates, I'm so excited to see where our journeys take us in high school 
If middle school is any indication, I think we're all going to become extraordinary people. My wish for us is that we can all try our best in everything, be kind to each other, be grateful for the amazing people in our lives, and enjoy the special high school moments as they happen. As Taylor Swift once said, make the friendship bracelets, take the moment to taste it, you've got no reason to be afraid. I can't wait to make more memories with all of you in high school. Congratulations to us, the class of 2027. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Our second speaker this evening is Mr. Anton Schmidt. Growing up is defined in the dictionary as the advance to maturity. Today, I'm gonna to tell you why growing up is more than just an advance. It's a long process that we started in middle school and must continue into high school. Middle school has been about learning how to grow up. I'm sure if you compared your kid now to them back in sixth grade, they're like a different person. And that's probably scary for some of you, definitely my mom, but growing up is an important part of being your own person. Growing up means different things for different people. So B, I'm gonna talk about what it meant for me in middle school. It was the very beginning of the year. I hadn't been paying much attention in my math class. Last year was really easy, and I had the same teacher, Mr. Mitchell, so I thought I could get away with another easy A. So when the first test came around, I didn't study. I told myself, I'm too tired, or I'll study tomorrow, and this test will be easy. I took the test, and I thought it was the easiest test I've ever taken. Later, when we got them back, Everyone else on my table got 90s and 95s, so I wasn't worried. My test got handed back. I flipped it over, and I had gotten a 70. Sure, it wasn't an F, but my parents weren't as optimistic as I was. I knew something needed to change, but I couldn't do it on my own. Mr. Mitchell helped me realize that the reason why I struggled on that test wasn't because it was hard. It was because I didn't try. It's because I didn't take charge over my own learning, he taught, he taught me responsibility. responsibility. Sorry about that. He taught me responsibility. Sorry about that again. He taught me responsibility and because I didn't take charge of, again, I'm sorry. He taught me responsibility and responsibility is an important part of becoming an adult. But I'm still learning and I mean, but I'm still learning. I mean, Mr. Mitchell still calls me a brat sometimes, because I am. But I'm sure if you asked him if I was more responsible now than I was back in seventh grade, he would say I am. I hope. I've played and hope to continue playing football for Bronxville. Playing football has taught me many values that have, had, that have helped me to become who I am today. I'm sure that your child your child sports or extracurriculars have done the same. When I first started playing football back in fifth grade, I wasn't worried about winning or losing. I was more worried about whether we got pizza or not after the game. But as I grew older and my passion for the game grew, I started to care. I started to care about winning, and we won. The first half of my seventh grade season was entirely big wins. But we had only one game where we couldn't get anything going. We played Westlake, and they played in a way we weren't prepared for. Our guys were left standing around with nothing, nothing to do, or we would have multiple guys blocking the same person. By halftime, it was 0-0. Our coaches pulled us aside and told us to get our act together, and that we should be winning. This was our first test of the season. The question became if we were willing to adapt and not let the score get to us, or would we fall apart under the pressure? At halftime, we talked it out. We decided that in order to win, we needed to communicate what each of us would be doing. So as a team, we got back on the field. We talked to each other, like we said, and let each other know who we're blocking and what our assignment was. We ended the game 7-0 and won it. The feeling of a long, arduous win was great. What that game in my entire football career has so far has taught me is that if you want to win and succeed, you can't do it alone. You need to work as a team, working not just for yourself, but for a larger group. I think it's something we must learn. Sorry about that. It's an important, 
Working not just for yourself but for a larger group is an important aspect of not just living but succeeding in the world. I think it's something we must learn before we become adults. Growing up is a process, and I'm certainly not there yet. I still don't wear my retainer every day. Sorry, Dad. But middle school was just the beginning of a long process of growing up. And I'm grateful to my teachers, coaches, and parents for starting me on my own path to growing up. And I can't wait to continue that in high school. So from the entire eighth grade class, I want to say thank you for guiding us in the long process of growing up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anton. Our third and final speaker is a wonderful young lady herself. Please welcome Eleanor Fahey. speaking at graduation today, I freaked out. I had no clue what I was going to be saying. And then, when my mom told me that there would be around 300 people here, forget it. I was terrified. But now, sorry. Now, as I stand in front of all 300 of you today, I do indeed feel nervous. But more importantly, I feel proud. In sixth grade, we were dropped into a whole new world of masks, six feet distance, plastic dividers, and we needed to adapt. We had no idea how to get through the halls that seemed like labyrinths as our tiny sixth grade selves wandered through them. We have come so far from confused sixth graders doing their best to navigate their way middle school. We're graduating eighth grade. I know, it's crazy. These past three years have been the young, longest yet shortest years of my life. And I've learned so much. For starters, I've gained numerous life skills. We have found ourselves in situations that require perseverance, leadership, and most importantly, kindness. And we had lots of fun along the way. Even though we may not need to know how to factor a trinomial for the rest of our lives, we have learned determination and grit when faced with challenging problems. Through these past three years, our teachers have taught us these skills and many more through heavy loads of classwork and group projects. Charles Dickens once said, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. To me, this quote really describes the middle school experience. And I know that looks very different for everyone here today, but overall shares the common theme of growth. Middle school, as Mr. McCora likes to call it, is the bridge between elementary school and high school. As many of you know, most kids are very different when they graduate fifth grade and when they graduate eighth grade. Our grade has been through so much and grown so much over the past three years, it's remarkable. Personally, I've, I've developed, developed some friendships, friendships that will last a lifetime. lifetime. I've, I've tried, tried new sports, sports and succeeded as well as failed. And, and these, experience, these experiences, these experiences will help shape who I will become in the future. future. Our, Our teachers, teachers have done a wonderful job of preparing, job of preparing us for high school, high school and, and we're, we're finally, finally done. done. I, wanted I wanted to thank, thank all of our teachers, six through eight, who have taken the time to carefully teach us the skills we need to be successful. And I also wanted to thank everyone who made this today possible, especially Mr. McCora, Mr. Agnello, and Mr. Santo. Last but certainly not least, I wanted to thank all of the families of the graduates that have gathered here today to celebrate this milestone in our lives. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations, class of 2027. to see somebody who's nervous try to follow those three speeches and uh, no way so I won't even try but before I do share some of my own reflections uh, I just want to acknowledge some wonderful people who really took the time to join us and be here tonight uh, sitting along this first row are members of our middle school staff that are here with us that work with these students for three years so I want to thank you and acknowledge you for being here and thank you so much I want to give, give a special, special shout out to uh, our office, office secretary who's been with these kids since they walked through the door, Mrs. Creek. Creek. Thank, Thank you for all you've done. <laughs> Mrs. Hussain, our middle school and, and, and high school assistant principal is here. Our guidance counselors, Lisa DeSanto and Jim Agnello. A big middle school welcome to our Director of Special Education who's here with us, Ms. Christine Dow. Thank you so much for being here with us, Christine. 
And last, last but never least, least, the person who guides our district, our fearless leader, and our superintendent, we welcome Rachel Kelly to them. Thank you, Rachel. And now to the stars of the show this evening, our students. So once again, good evening again, Bronxville Middle School family. And again, thank you to our three speakers for sharing their reflections. And again, I say I dare not try to follow you, but I want to share a few sentiments of my own. I want to begin by thanking all of our families, friends, and loved ones for being here with us tonight. For tonight is really that special evening. Before us tonight is a wonderful representation that I feel that a representation of hope, unlimited potential, hard workers, and kind people. To me, they will always be that class of resilience. We hear a lot about the word resilience these days. Resilience is defined, one of the many definitions of the word is the ability to withstand and recover from difficulties, to display toughness in times of adversity. These students truly exemplify that. To the parents and families of these students, I thank you for allowing us the opportunity we had to share with them. You see, time is truly a gift, and the time we spent with them will be a gift that we always treasure. Thank you for that time. Obviously, on a personal level, this class will always be very special to me because a principal only gets one first eighth grade class in their career when they start a new position. And this will always be my first eighth grade class, and what a special class they are. I'll share something personal with you, you see, because when I came to the middle school this year, I was so worried about getting to know this class because I would have the least amount of time to get to know them. So getting to know them was a priority for me on a personal level. And it started real simple over the summer. First, it started by begging Mrs. Creek to get me a yearbook so that I could start looking at seventh grade photos and start putting some names to these faces. But it was then just trying the simple things like standing in the hallway each morning as they came into school, um, being in the hallways again in between classes, walking in and out of those classrooms, the cafeteria, and just being at dismissal and wishing them all a good day. Uh, simple little things like that, those hellos, and slowly but surely, these faces started having names to them. And I believe a great relationship started developing between a principal and his students. When I first came into the middle school, I was very, I will not lie, I was very envious of that relationship I saw with the staff that knew them, and I wanted to be a part of that special relationship. So these students then began telling me their story. And with the support of that amazing staff, together we started an adventure that was the 2022-2023 school year. And what an adventure it has been. It's a time I'll always look back on with a big smile. And ladies and gentlemen, just always know that one of the biggest honors I'll ever have is saying that I was your principal. To my dear students, I've said this often, that in the world of education, to me, the middle school is always symbolized by a beautiful bridge that takes you from those young days of elementary school world to the amazing world of high school. And in the middle of all that is your time with us. Middle school is a time of growth, challenge, and celebration of achievement. Hopefully, at some point during your middle school journey, you were inspired in a classroom or on a trip or to some experience and it ignited maybe some type of a passion in you. So as you move to high school, you can maybe follow that passion and desire and who knows, it can lead you towards something you may want to pursue in life. During your middle school time, we try to work with you to develop positive skills and habits that will hopefully help you and serve you for the rest of your life. Along your middle school journey, you probably face some adversity along the way. But tonight is a classic example of how when you just keep working hard and you do not give up, that you will achieve your goal. If you remember, we began this year in September with one of our assemblies. Funny side story, I brought them into their first assembly as a class, and as they were walking in, several of them said to me, what did we do wrong, why are we here? I said, we didn't do anything wrong, we're gonna have a conversation. So we started having conversations and assemblies, and it was actually a lot of fun. I, I'll always remember those assemblies. But we did speak about some simple themes that could carry us through a year. And some of those themes were, you may remember, do your best, do not be afraid to struggle, and even if you fail something at times, always know you're never alone. We'll be there to help. Ask for help. Advocate for yourself when you need it. Follow the rules. Respect everyone. And with that powerful use of words and actions, try to make someone's day every single day with the simple act of kindness. And you can create a school that has a culture of kindness. So 
You might have heard we went on a few trips this year. And yesterday was actually a trip that I did not attend with them. They went to Great Adventure. And I was waiting for them to come back from Great Adventure with their wonderful teachers. And the fifth grade was getting ready for their moving up ceremony. And I was uh, watching them practice throughout the day. I was watching them set up like we were setting up for this one. And what I could not get over from one year to another was the difference between a fifth grader and an eighth grader. Because you all look like grown adults compared to those fifth grade students that I saw moving up yesterday. And it's hard to believe it, but it was only three years ago that you moved up from elementary school. For many students in three years, you grow as much physically and emotionally in middle school as you grow in six years of elementary school. Think of where you were and think of where you are right now and be proud of all you have done. Because tonight is a night to celebrate that growth and look towards high school with great enthusiasm and joy. For I know there is no limit to your potential and I look forward to hearing about and seeing all of the amazing things that you will accomplish in high school as well does our teachers and staff. To our parents and families here, take some time today yourselves to celebrate this evening because your students have been undertaken a great accomplishment and achieved a great accomplishment. But this is also your accomplishment. They are here because of all you did to get them to this point. And again, thank you for sharing with them with us because they've made our lives better by having known them. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had some great times together in middle school, but always know the best times of your life are ahead of you. Work hard, enjoy the experience, and do your best. The other day I was speaking to some of you at the practice and I always used to feel so bad at middle school moving up ceremonies when I worked in other places because the students would leave, they'd go to another building and I wouldn't see them again. And that's such the beautiful thing about Bronxville is that you're just going down to another part of the building and I'll get to see you in those high school years as well. So finally, my dear students, I ask one thing of you. Please go forward and continue your journey where you will continue to be those innovators, where you will engage the world in a positive way, where you will continue to critically think to solve problems, and you will inspire others through your leadership. For you are the fulfillment of what we call the Bronxville Promise. Congratulations to you all, and thank you for all you have done and all you would do, you will do. Your middle school family loves you, and we are always here for you. Congratulations, everyone. And I will now call upon that duo of DeSanto and Agnello to take their places. <laughs> and it is that wonderful time where we will begin to hand out some wonderful certificates. I want everyone to get a lot of applause, and we also want to make sure everybody can hear their name. So what we'll do is I'll call a row, and then at the end of calling that row, we'll burst into a big loud round of applause for each row as they receive. So I will ask now row one to please stand. We practiced, we practiced that, that so hard. hard. You did a good, good job, job on that stand, guys. <laughs> Anybody who's at the practice knows what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Sean Ahn, Daniel Alma, Ava Anderson, Ciara Anders, Kira Andrews, excuse me, Valentino Angelani, Joseph Antonini, Mabel Origi, Charles Atkinson, Victor Aviles, Chase Bacigalupo, Harrison Bacigalupo, Rohan Bala, Elizabeth Barnes, Celia Beatrice, Reese Beldotti, Sabrina Belki, Matthew Beachy, Ruben Blazachuk, Peter Barducci, Rishan Branch, Ava Pringle, William Pringle, Cooper Caruso, Joshua Calatrella, and Justin Costanzo. Let's hear from Ron. And row one, you may be seated. Row two, please stand. Caroline Cregan, Charlotte Davis, Elizabeth Delaney, Emerson Dennis, Odin Deppi, Nathaniel Deutsch, Samuel Dicker, Mary 
Donahue, Charlotte Dorr, Eleanor Fahey, Jackson Fino, Abigail Fung, John Fowler, Isabella Gallo, William Gaston, Camille Gautier, Arlen Jonai, William Glazer, Benjamin Gonzalez, Oliver Goulden, Charles Greenfield, Alexander Groning, Emmanuel Gruyan, and Charlotte Haller. Let's hear from row two, everyone. And row two, you may be seated. Row three, please stand. Kylie Hilbert, Andre Karaman, Dimitri Kiedis, Nicholas Kiedis, Harrison Keen, Timothy Kennan, Mustafa Kaiser, Asher Lavelle, Josephine Letty, Madeline Leon, Parker Lewis, Sienna Lodi, Mark Lukvancic, Liam Marcus, Molly McBrien, Ella McCallum, William McCarthy, Diana McEnroe, Juliet McEnroe, Theodore McMurray, Eva Mihova, Maya Mika, Margaret Miner. Congratulations to row three. Come on, everybody. Row three, you may be seated. Great job. Row four, please stand. Lila Moore. William Morris Rowe, Paul Newton, Mackenzie O'Gorman, Justin O'Hare, Luke O'Hare, Alexandra Orth, Maria Overby, Joseph Oziel, Matteo Palmieri, Grant Patterson, Caroline Pinkos, Sophia Price, Porter Rao, Elizabeth Reedy, Xavier Riley, Lynn Ranking, Min Ranking, Nam Ranking, Henry Rubel, Brendan Robinson, Grace Rosier, and Camille and Camila. Rucci. Congratulations to row four. Row four, you may be seated. Row five, please stand. Harrison Rufo. Thomas Ruhanen. Kate Saad. Elizabeth Savoy, Theodore Schaefer, Anton Schmidt, Henry Scholes, Killian Sen, Lauren Seifert, Leah Schub, Ben Smart, Sean Spillane, Samuel Stein, Trey Stoop, E. E. Sun, Amelia Theodorzuk, Ava Tulin, Alexandra Tuck, Melissa Vale, Kendall Valente, Grace Van Tienhoven, and Reese Vanderwalker. Row five. Great job. Row five, you may be seated. And now, last but never least, row six, please stand. 
See, row six, I told you, you'll always get the loudest applause. There we go. Mary Vorbach, come on down. Charles Watkins. David Werner. Jackson Westerheim. Grayson Williams. Curtis Williams. Karina Wynecki. Kavya Widana. Isabella Wiley. Zijun Zhu. Margaret Young. Vaughn Young. Sophia Zanetos. Lucas Zara. Bennett Zivik. And James Malloy. About a really big round of applause for James. Big round of applause for James. Before we conclude, uh, something I was reminded by my friend Cooper Caruso at the Memorial Day assembly was the ceremony was that thank yous and pleases uh, were taught to us in kindergarten and they are never played out or worn out in any way. Cooper said it way better than I just did. So I want to thank a few people that are here tonight that made this all possible. I want to thank, in particular, our incredible middle school orchestra led by Mr. Dell for what they did for us. I want to thank the unsung heroes, oftentimes that we don't mention, that we always should mention. Let's thank our custodians for putting all this together. This is the, uh, this is the grand finale tonight, so they've been working really hard, and we want to thank them. And, of course, those people that keep us safe all day long, our wonderful security guards that are here with us tonight as well. Thank you. Graduates, would you just please stand for a moment? One last bit of advice. You're off to a wonderful adventure. That is high school. Remember simple things. Work hard, do your best, be kind to each other, trust in your family's advice, and just be the best person you can be. Let's give them a big round of applause. Congratulations, everyone.
Thank you, everyone. Our seventh grade uh, council, our seventh grade PTA council chairs have arranged a little hospitality afterwards. And if any of your children did not pick up their yearbooks or their T-shirts, they're on that table in the back over there. Go pick them up. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night.